Welcome everybody. It's a <coughs> real privilege for me to start this conference. Uh, don't be misled by the fact that my name appears somewhere as an organizer. So this is a real organizer, as everybody knows. So uh, everything what happens here in thanks, thanks to him, <coughs> to, to Dr. Skovron. So uh, uh, I would like only to welcome you and to really express my gratitude to everybody who decided to participate in our conference and maybe explain a little bit, although this is probably clear for everybody, why we decided to, to organize such a conference. <coughs> Okay, so first, first, uh, first uh, reason is very obvious, because it's interesting, okay? It's interesting, and uh, uh, the, uh, the topic itself, from a mathematical point of view, is fascinating, at least for me, I'm not a mathematician. Uh, but obviously there is a hidden agen agenda be uh, behind that. <coughs> And this agenda is simply to make a, to provide the opportunity for the people from different backgrounds to meet and to, to discuss things which could be of, a, of common interest for everybody. Uh, why this so? So, as uh, I see it, uh, category theory, as it uh, appeared in mathematics, say, in 45, maybe, of the last century. Uh, at the very beginning was definitely, the, there was a marvelous idea of <coughs> Eilenberg and MacLean to consider what, what are the natural, in a sense, uh, equivalences uh, among structures or among algebraic structures, in this case, in mathematics. But soon, uh, okay, and at this moment, when they introduce notions which are now the core of, uh, of uh, category theory, so uh, you could say that it was, as I see it, in a sense, uh, a kind of uh, a modern version of, of Klein's Erlangen program in which you put more, more emphasis on the fact of transformations than on the, I would say, objects themselves. And this is what I put here in ball. Oh, sorry. No, this is not what I wanted. But I can still... Yes. This is what I put it here in bold because I think that <clears throat> this is something which could be Treat it as a, uh, this uh, real background for the common interest of all of us. So I would say, so this is a very vague formulation, obviously, but the emphasis is put on the actions, on the transformation, in this case, func functors or morphisms, rather than uh, sets and elements of sets, okay? doesn't mean that one is better than the other. This is simply other kind of, uh, I would say, formulation of foundation of mathematics to some extent also. So this is what what is, there should be also some laser pointer here, yes? Or not? Ah, okay, yes. So, there are several applications of this in mathematics, and we will witness this uh, during this conference, I hope. Uh, so, what is, for example, then, for me, interesting uh, is, and somehow brings me to the ne next <coughs> topic, so, so next application in physics is some kind of reconstruction, for example, of logic, uh, classical or non-classical logics. 
uh, and uh, and uh, uh, application of this in, in, in physics. Okay, so uh, there is also a well developed part of uh, computer science. Okay, using mm. or modern computer science or how to call it. Uh, using a uh, category theory as a... Okay, so <clears throat> now in physics, as I told you, so this is uh, something which is, which for me is interesting. So this is my, actually, this is my personal connection a bit to, to category theory in physics. So the applications of, I would say, reconstruction of logical structure, for example, of, of quantum mechanics and and quantum mechanics and beyond, I wrote here, and you will see why beyond also. But we'll also have <coughs> uh, some uh, lectures concerning application to quantum gravity, to <coughs> topological problems in physics, and some others. Okay, but <coughs> there is also a third one, a third, I would say, column of this what is what is interesting in why why we think that it is uh, interesting to gather and to discuss some problems is the applications of uh, category theory beyond i would say exact sciences be beyond mathematics and physics and for example and this is uh, something which uh, me and i think bartek also uh, see as a most exciting thing is the application of this kind of reasonings which are somehow uh, provided by category theory to philosophical problems. Here I present the cover of the book which is going to appear soon as far as I understand and you can see that for everybody who knows the history of category theory, this title is probably not so, uh, I would say, it resembles this very, very, very uh, fundamental uh, book about categories for working mathematicians. So as I told to Bartek, so if we published our uh, proceedings sooner than this book so we will win okay in a sense okay <clears throat> what is interesting for me and this unfortunately we didn't succeed to uh, to find uh, uh, somebody who could tell us about some other applications of, of category theory beyond this uh, what what was uh, said before Namely, in other, I would say, part of, of not science, but be art. For example, there is a very interesting book, which is called The Topos of Music, in which uh, categorical reasoning is used to actually to explain many phenomena in musicology, starting from the simplest, simplest, uh, hmm, problems concerning with in harmony but also with uh, performance and counterpoint okay and this is just to show you without explanation okay these are some parts of this book which is really a musicology book and you will easily recognize the mm, characteristic schemes or characteristic uh, reasonings which are common in category theory. So our point is that <coughs> category theory in this formulation, not this formulation, as a, as, as a theory, could be treated as something which is far beyond uh, physics and mathematics, or mathematics and physics, for some reasons in the title of our conference, Physics First, although I think that mathematics should be first. Uh, but uh, uh, it doesn't really matter. But that this uh, this kind of reasonings which are provided, 
where it could be used to build some bridges between uh, science and humanities, uh, science and art, and uh, this is our hope that our uh, conference will contribute to this, to the common understanding also among different, uh, I would say, circles of scientists or investigators or researchers, okay? Uh, not only in exact sciences, but also in arts and <coughs> humanities. And uh, with this hope, I would like to invite you to participate very actively in our discussions uh, after the uh, after um, lectures. And I also hope that everybody would uh, put enough effort to be comprehensible to the people who are actually could be far from the particular field of research uh, he pre uh, represents. Okay, so with this hope I would like to open the conference and uh, once more thank you very much for coming. Uh, thank you very much for accepting our invitation to participate and uh, above others to deliver lectures uh, and let's start our conference. Thank you.